Origin of the counterfeit Christianity as well, and we are going to show you what it is. Now, true Christianity, the real Christianity, is based on the teaching of Jesus. Because Christianity, it came about because of Jesus Christ. And so everything is supposed to be based. If it's valid, if it is good then everything is supposed to be based on the teaching of Jesus Christ. That is why we must deal with the teaching of Jesus Christ. And then we are going to deal with this counterfeit Christianity as well. Because there is counterfeit out there. If you just look around you, I mean, the evidence tells you that there must be a counterfeit. Because you have all these different denominations. And they all call themselves Christian, but yet they teach the work of Christ. And you tell me which one is right. You need to figure that out. I've had people come to me and tell me, uh, you know, all these different uh, religions that call themselves Christian, how are you supposed to know which one is right? And that is a good question. How are you supposed to know which one is right? Because they all say they're Christian, and they all claim to believe in Jesus Christ. They even claim to believe in the Bible as well. So now, but we all could not be dealing with the same book if you're coming up with all these different doctrines. So there's something wrong there, isn't it? So that's why we're going to examine this thing, and we are going to uh, determine which is the real Christianity and which is the counterfeit. We're going to begin in Acts chapter 7. And we'll begin reading at verse 35. Acts 7. And we will pick it up at verse 35. We're going to start by showing you uh, when the church uh, got started and who the Lord started it with. We're going to begin reading at Acts chapter 7. And we'll begin reading at verse 35, 7 and 35, okay? Go ahead and read. This Moses whom they refused, mm -hmm. saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Now, we understand what time we are reading about here. We are reading about when the Lord delivered Israel out of Egypt by the hand of Moses. But go ahead and continue reading now. This is that Moses, mm -hmm. which said unto the children of Israel, go ahead. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Uh -huh. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Now, this is where the church got started. It got started in the wilderness. church didn't get started in Acts 2. You know, that's what most people teach. You know, they teach it was the Israelites and then it was the church later on. But no, the church got started in the wilderness. And this is that Moses that was with the church in the wilderness. And who was he with? He was with the Israelites. Go ahead and read. With the angels which spake to him mm -hmm. in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers. Go ahead. Who received the lively oracles to give unto us. And he said they received the lively oracles to give unto us. Us who? The generations that were the followers. Let's go now to uh, Romans chapter 3, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. And I'm going to show you who it is that was given the oracles of God. Oracles mean divine revelation. We're going to start reading here in uh, Romans chapter 3, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Romans 3, and we will pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. 3 and 1. 
three animals. Okay, go ahead, me. What advantage then have the Jew? Now he asked the question here, and this is Paul, and he is the apostle to the Gentile. But yet he asked, he is a Jew, but he is an apostle to the Gentile. But now he asked the question, what advantage then have the Jew? And he's going to give the answer. Go ahead, me. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Go ahead. Much every way. And he said much in every way. Go ahead. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Chiefly, mainly in other words, because unto them were committed God's oracles. In other words, Israel or the Jew, that is the one that he gave his divine revelation to. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we began reading at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. There's a reason I'm going back here dealing with the Old Testament first, because, uh, you know, you say, well, Christianity started in the New Testament, but we're going to understand what it was all founded on. Let's start reading here, though, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll begin reading at verse 1, and I'm going to show you who that was that was with Moses and with the Israelites in the wilderness. Let's start reading at verse 1, uh, 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 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. Get it. Go ahead, me, brother. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant uh -huh. how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, Paul is taking it back to when uh, uh, Israel was delivered out of Egypt by the hand of Moses. Mm -hmm. And that and that is when Moses was there with the church that was in the wilderness. Now, show you who that was that was there with Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. Go ahead, read on. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Go ahead. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Uh -huh. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Go ahead. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So this let you know that was Jesus that was back there in the wilderness with the Israelite, with Moses and the Israelite. Mm -hmm. That was not the father, you know, contrary to what most people believe. It was not the father; it was Jesus that was there in the wilderness. Go ahead, skip down to verse seven, and it'll 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 let you know. Go ahead, read on. Neither be ye idolaters, uh -huh. as were some of them, as it is written. Go ahead. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Go ahead, me. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and failed in one day three and twenty thousand. Uh -huh. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted. Wait a minute now. If they tempted Christ, that means that Christ had to be there in the wilderness, right? Yeah, right. How right. else could they tempt him if he was not there with them in the wilderness? And let that, that let you know as well that Jesus didn't start with Mary. He just started in the flesh with Mary. But he existed throughout eternity. That is why he said, don't let us tempt Christ as some of them tempted and was destroyed of the serpent. Finish that verse. And were destroyed of serpent. And was destroyed. So that was Jesus that was with Moses and the Israelites back there in the wilderness. Then, wasn't right. it? Let's go further. Let's go now to uh, John chapter 5 and we'll begin to read at verse 36. John 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 36. Don't worry, we're going to bring it on down to when Christianity was established. But we're taking it back to its foundation first, when the church was first established. Let's start reading here at John 5, and we will begin reading at verse 36, and I'm going to show you what Jesus said. You know, because they were always throwing uh, uh, Moses in Jesus' face. You know, that's what the Jews were doing. Well, Moses said this, and Moses said that. But they didn't understand who that was that was back there with Moses. They didn't understand that. That is why they was always condemning him by throwing what Moses said in his face. But they don't understand he was the one that gave it to Moses, is what right, he said. Right, right. Let's start reading here at, uh, at John chapter 5, and we'll begin reading at verse 36. 5 and 36. 5 and 36. Now, uh, Jesus had first told them about how John was a witness. But now he's going to tell them, I got a greater witness than that of John. Go ahead and read, verse 36. But I have a greater witness than that of John. Uh -huh. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, uh -huh. bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Go ahead. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So he just let them know, well, if you ain't never heard the voice, Father's voice or seen his shape, then who was that that was back there in the wilderness with Israel and with Moses? Mm -hmm. Had to be Jesus. But Jesus is telling you, you ain't never heard the Father.